Hello folks, welcome back to the SFOM channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. In this week's video I want to share with you my picture of the month, the North America Nebula. And you can already see it over there. So, let's get into it. If you're new to the channel, my channel is all about astrophotography. So I share free tutorials and free equipment reviews that hopefully help you to improve your own astrophotography skills. And if you like that kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. And for those of you who already subscribed to my channel, thank you very much for doing so. And let's get into the video. Hi folks, I just wanted to share this little bit of information with you. So, uh, yesterday I got featured on the At Universe Today. So first of all, Universe Today, thank you very much for featuring my astrophotography pictures. And this is an Instagram account. And uh, I just wanted to show you how this works because if you have an Instagram account and you want to share your astrophotography pictures to a larger community, this is a great um, opportunity for you. So let me get into my smartphone and I'll just show you how that uh, worked. So Universe Today asks you to, uh, to share three of your astrophotography pictures. So of course I shared my Horsehead Nebula, which got about 2310 likes, the Heart Nebula 2100 likes, and the Rosette Nebula, it's now at 2800 uh, hearts, I have to say. They are hearts at uh, Instagram. And uh, also about 100 new subscribers uh, moved over to my account. So uh, yeah, that's very nice. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for if you're starting out and you have some nice astrophotography pictures, just add, add Universe Today to your post. And uh, yeah, Universe Today will, sh will notice you and they will check out your account and uh, they might ask you to feature your pictures on that channel as well. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Let's move on to the video. Hi folks, uh, as you can see we're now in Deep Sky Stacker, but uh, let me mention some general information first. So uh, I have used, uh, as usual, I have used my ZWO 1600 Mono Pro camera to capture all of these images. Uh, together with my uh, telescope, uh, my APO Photoline Refractor, it's an 80mm refractor, an F7 refractor, and I really like it. I, at one day I will make a, a review on that as well. Um, and of course my Celestron Advanced VX, uh, some people say uh, that the Celestron Advanced is not suitable for deep sky astrophotography. But please don't believe those people, look at my picture here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as capturing software, of course I have used Sequence Generator Pro to, together with the uh, PhD guiding. And uh, yeah, I ended up with uh, three stacks of narrowband images using HA, uh, S2 and O3 filters from ZWO, seven nanometer uh, narrowband filters. And you can uh, see here in Photoshop, or in Photoshop, <coughs> Deep Sky Stacker, that I have created uh, three separate groups. So we have a main group, a group one and a group two. And uh, yeah, let's get into that a little bit. I have, uh, with my H alpha filter, I have taken 67 light frames. And uh, maybe that is a bit of an overkill for this target because um, yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, this is just a one frame um, uh, picture you see right here. And uh, of course here you can see the North America Nebula already and also the Cygnus wall. And uh, yeah, also looking back on this framing, I, I really liked uh, the Cygnus wall that it was in the center of the picture. But actually, I, I think I should have rotated my camera a little bit because now the rest of North America is not here. But at least, uh, yeah, we see here Cape Canaveral and Florida. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, I have ended up with three stacks. Uh, they are all taken with a five minute uh, exposure time and they are cooled at minus 25 degrees Celsius. 
Um, so you see here the HA stack, it has 67 frames. I have here an O3 uh, stack. I think it was about also 65 frames. Uh, and this is my S2 stack. And actually with the S2 stack, I ended up with about 43 uh, uh, frames because it was a bit cloudy. I have imaged uh, during several nights, nights and when I was capturing the S2 images it was a bit cloudy so i had to throw away about 20 22 frames i uh. so uh yeah that's it and also of course so we have dark frames um um, and uh, I have cooled those dark frames uh, also at 20, minus 25 degrees uh, at 5 minutes uh, exposure time. And uh, I have added some uh, flat frames. Uh, yeah, Sequence Generator Pro has a flat frame wizard for that. And there was one question actually from a, you, uh, a, a person on YouTube. He asked me how can you actually frame all of these different stacks so that they have the exact same uh, image. So what you need to do is actually you need to pick one picture that you really like in terms of framing and then you right click on your mouse button and you can then uh, click it here use as a reference frame and then all of the other images they will be positioned uh, they will align with this reference frame also when this reference frame is not checked on in your stack so uh, please remember that and uh, yeah that's a bit of uh, yeah there was one particular uh, strange issue and that is that my uh, my dark frames when i added my dark frames i could not uh, produce uh, a normal picture a stacked uh, picture of the h alpha stack and i don't know why this was the case maybe it is the case that i have so many pictures that i don't need the darks anymore but um, i don't know uh, it, it looked like when i added the darks that uh, the picture was a bit uh, overexposed or something so uh, I left them out actually in the HA stack in the end. So um, yeah, that's a little bit what I wanted to tell you in Deep Sky stack or so. Let's move on to Photoshop. I will show you the, yeah, the stacked uh, images, the HA, the O3 and the S2 stacks. And also, uh, yeah, I will show you the combined uh, RGB uh, image. So hi folks, uh, the question I wanted to ask you in this video is, what kind of deep sky objects are you interested in imaging during this particular fall? Could be the uh, Andromeda galaxy, Triangulum galaxy, maybe a nice globular cluster, maybe a nice nebula. Please let me know in the comment section down below because I'm really curious about what other astrophotographers uh, do uh, in this fall. And actually in the Netherlands it has been terrible weather for the past four, year, four weeks. So I had, I had no opportunity whatsoever to engage in astrophotography. So hi folks, uh, we're now in Photoshop, as you can see, Photoshop Creative Cloud the 2019 edition. And uh, yeah, as said, I'm not getting into a step-by-step -step tutorial right now. I'm working on that and I will make a separate video. But uh, yeah, I have also made some videos in the past on my channel. I will quickly show you those. So uh, I have uh, how to post-process post your Astro photos. <laughs> a uh, yeah, a, a playlist basically where I have made different videos on how to uh, post-process your images in Photoshop. And yeah they are a little bit old some of them are one year old so uh, that's why i'm making a new one but feel free to use them of course and um, yeah as always i start uh, in photoshop with uh, the levels and curves so you can see here i have the ha stack of 65 frames uh, at five minutes uh, for each of the frames i have here the s2 uh, stack of 42 frames and the o3 stack well we're actually 75 frames so uh, yeah, we have really a long, uh, long uh, integration time. So that is really nice. I, I wanted to go deep this time on a particular target to see if I would uh, see a higher quality picture in the end. Um, so yeah, of course, I am always working with some level and curve uh, uh, stretches. And uh, yeah, you can see here the difference. So here you see the original stack uh, as downloaded from Deep Sky Stacker. And after applying some uh, levels and curves, you can see here the uh, HA stack. So you see already that there is a lot of information in this picture. And uh, yeah, the S2, um, you can see it here. It's uh, only 42 frames, uh, unfortunately. Oh, this is already the curved and uh, the, the curves and levels are here already applied. This is the download from uh, Deep Sky Stacker. And this is with the curves and levels applied. And then we have the O3 stack. Oh, I should also 
make them like this. So this is the download from Deep Sky Stacker. And after applying some level and curves, uh, uh, we ended up, I ended up with this O3 stack. And that's also really nice because this is the bluish part of the North America Nebula. And you can really, you can already see it in the picture. So I was happy with that actually. And uh, yeah, then I always move on to combining these three um, uh, different pictures into an overall RGB image. And you can see the overall RGB image here. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see if I quickly go back to, I think this is how to post, uh, to process narrow band images uh, in Photoshop CC. Um, in that particular video, I also get into um, how you can produce an RGB stack from each of these Im individual mono uh, uh, stacked uh, uh, images. So uh, if you want to know that, uh, check out that video. And of course, then we end up with the green slime, as I always uh, think about it or, or call it, uh, because the HA... Uh, channel is so much uh, has so much more uh, information as compared to the s2 and the o3 you will end up with um, yeah this greenish looking uh, rgb picture um, and so yeah what i always do is i apply this filter the uh, deep sky colors hlvg so the hasta la vista green so a goodbye green filter and uh, I also showed this in a video, another video, but I will quickly show you this again. So we have this uh, deepskycolors.com, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, hasta la vista green filter. You can just Google it and you will get to this uh, particular site. Uh, yeah, you can download the filter and you can install it in Photoshop. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's, it's, yeah, if you follow the instructions on the website, you, uh, you will be able to do that. And um, yeah, let's let me show you this again. So the deep sky colors Astra La Vista green has a couple of oh, if it's willing to start up, something happened. Ah, yeah, it has a different <laughs> uh, a, a strong, a medium, and a weak option. So usually I take the medium option, but it depends a little bit on the, the narrow band target. So when you press OK, then you see, OK, we are now getting this beautiful um, yeah, gold in the S2 part of the picture. And we also we are also beginning to see this nice bluish nebulosity of the North American nebula. And then, of course, I take a lot of uh, extra steps uh, to uh, come to my final uh, result. And uh, because I, I did not really share that part, I'm working on a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, it is not in this video, but it will be on my channel soon. So uh, I hope to share that with you soon. So uh, yeah, that is what I wanted to show you here in Photoshop for now. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, and uh, I will show you the final image. Hi folks, so just before showing you the end result, I wanted to thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also the question of the day was, what kind of deep sky objects are you interested in imaging during this fall? What kind of objects? So please let me know in the comment section down below. I'm happy to respond to that and engage in a conversation with you about the deep sky objects. And yeah, without further ado, let's uh, look at that final res result. And uh, hopefully it is better than uh, the first one I took uh, one year ago. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 